Hey, good morning. This is Joe Van Cleve. We're out in far northeast Albuquerque again. Today, I'm going to be doing a series of test exposures onto Harman direct positive paper. Uh, and my purpose is to find the true working ISO speed of the paper. Now, yesterday, I was in this same area with the large 8x10 camera, and I had assumed that the ISO speed was about 3 from my previous experience, and maybe my memory was uh, faulty, but it turned out to be grossly overexposed. So today I'm going to do a series of ISO tests, and then we're going to go process them at home and see what true speed we actually have. So today I'm using the uh, 4x5 speed graphic with a modern uh, Fujinon lens. Okay, so we have the speed graphic camera set up, the Fujinon lens. I've already focused and composed on the scene of the Sandia Mountains right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series of tests. So I'm going to do four different film speeds. I'm going to do ISO 3, ISO 6, ISO 9, and ISO 12. If I set my light meter to ISO 3 and point it at the scene, take a reading, I'm going to get roughly f5.6, let's say a fifteenth of a second between f5.6 and f8. So what I want to do is I want to keep the shutter speeds for all three of these tests below one second. And the reason why I want to do that is so I can eliminate any effects of reciprocity failure. We can test for reciprocity failure later, but for now I want to do sub one second exposures so I make sure that the exposures are consistent. So this first exposure will be at a fifteenth of a second between f8 and f5.6. Okay, so we just finished our exposure at ISO 3. I'm going to set the meter now to ISO 6. I'm going to point it to the scene the same way. Our light hasn't changed. Um, appreciably. So now the exposure is going to be 1 15th of a second between f8 and f11. So I'm going to set 1 15th. I'm going to set the aperture between f8 and f11. I'm going to cock the shutter and getting out of the field of view of the lens we're going to take our pull our dark slide. Don't forget that. And here we go. All right. So that was our second uh, of four tests of uh, the ISO speed of this Harman Direct Positive paper. Okay, we've done the ISO 6 and ISO 3 tests. Now I'm going to set the meter to ISO 9. And again, take a reading, reflected light reading off of uh, the mountains. And uh, it's going to be a 15th at F11. So a 15th of a second, F11. Cock the shutter, pull the dark slide, get out of the way of the picture, make the exposure. Okay, so that is it for that test. One more to go. Okay, our final uh, ISO test for the Harman direct positive paper is for ISO 12. So I'm going to, of course, set my meter to 12. Again, point it at the scene, zero the needle. So it's going to be a 15th between F11 and F16. So there we go. Cock the shutter, pull the dark slide, get out of the way of the lens. Take the picture, put the dark slide back in. And we are pretty much done with those tests. We're going to go home now and we're going to process hopefully all four of these uh, paper positives in one tank at one time. And I'll show you how we do that just in a second. Okay, now we're back home and uh, I'm going to be processing all four of these um, direct positive paper prints at one time, at the same time, using this extension tube to my Jobo print developing tank. This bottom part is the original print developing tank and it holds two 4x5 uh, pieces of paper. But this extension enables me to put all four of them in here at once. So we're going to process this. It takes 100 milliliters of uh, developer, which is only about this much. So it's not much at all. Um, three minutes in the, the developer. I'm using Ilford multi-grade liquid developer concentrate diluted 1 plus 10. Stop bath, 
fix her for two minutes and then we'll have to do some rinsing because it is fiber-based paper. So we're going to go ahead and start this and oh yeah, I'm using a, uh, a rotary base here so I'll be able to sit there and turn it. So that's it. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, when we're done here. Okay, we're going to get our four Harman direct positive prints out of the film drying cabinet. They're here. They are taped to a piece of glass with drafting tape, which is uh, one of the few ways I've found of getting um, these paper fiber-based prints to dry flat. So we're going to remove them from the drying cabinet and take a look at them. Okay, well let's see the results that we have. First of all, as a reference, I'm going to look at the print that I did yesterday in the 8x10. This was at ISO 3 and um, this is the whole reason why I wanted to begin recalibrating my ISO to this of this paper because you can see that the mountains are way overexposed. You can barely make out the detail. So let's see what we have today for today's results. So these are in the plastic sleeves. It's just easier for me to hold them that way. Do have some glare. Um, so first of all, this is the ISO 3 test that I did today. Now let me, maybe I should pull this out. Um, looking at the two, this is ISO 3 today using a 15th of a second shutter speed. This was in uh, roughly f5.6 or f8, I forget what the aperture is. This is using f46 f-stop. It turned out to be about a three second exposure, uh, but it was timed by hand with my wristwatch. So um, there is a slight difference between the two, which tells me that um, there might be some reciprocity failure going on. This is a 15th of a second. Again, this is more than one second. However, if it really was reciprocity failure, you would expect this to be darker or underexposed. Um, but it's pretty consistent. So I would say um, there isn't much reciprocity out to about three seconds. So as you can see on this print, um, the tones are really too light. The, the dried grasses are really kind of blown out. So let's go now and look at the ISO 6 image. The ISO 6 image looks really nice. I'm going to see if I can't zoom in here and uh, hold it up. I got the camera at a weird angle, but uh, focusing. The tones are pretty nice on this print. Um, the mountains have a nice amount of detail. There's good shadow with pretty good density still. Um, what's interesting is you have a little bit of cloud detail or sky detail still. This is really getting close to um, the ideal uh, uh, ISO of 6. So let's go and now look at ISO 9. So the ISO 9 shot, um, again the shadows are even deeper. Um, they're really getting to be too dense to have uh, a good amount of detail for them. But the highlights of the dried grasses are not blown out at all. They look really nice and you even have even more of a darker sky because we're underexposing it now. Keep in mind that this uh, paper is blue sensitive so the sky usually overexposes but when you underexpose the picture you'll get some sky detail. And finally ISO 12 which I figured would be too um, too slow, um, too, too little exposure and sure enough it is you can see that the shadows are just too dark to make out any real detail, but the, what's interesting is you can see the sky is even more dramatic in its appearance. So four different exposures, ISOs 3, 6, 9, and 12. Um, I really think the optimal exposure is somewhere between ISO 6 and ISO 9, maybe like 7, 7.5 or something like that. Um, so it's really pretty good results from um, uh, from this paper. And again, I'm using the Ilford uh, multi-grade paper developer diluted 1 plus 10, uh, about 68 degrees. 
So those are my results for today. Um, okay, so this is the ISO 6 print that I did. Um, I really like the results. Um, what I like also is the fact that the foreground is pretty much um, soft focus because I'm using a fairly wide aperture. And I uh, really like that picture. The mountains are nice and sharp. I'm using um, a Fujinon uh, 135 millimeter large format view camera lens with a modern shutter. It's a fairly modern lens, so the speed should be fairly accurate. But again, I really like the results I'm getting. Again, uh, somewhere between ISO 6 and ISO 9 looks like about the right speed for this paper in daylight. Now, in shadow, um, in, sh in deep shade, I'm going to have to redo the test to see what kind of uh, ISO it has because we might have some reciprocity failure. So anyway, this is Joe Van Cleve. I hope you enjoyed this um, uh, calibration test of the Harman direct positive paper. I would encourage you to go ahead and try to use this paper if you can. It loads right up into the uh, standard 4x5 sheet film holders and it's a great product. Have a good day.